Can you believe it's been two years already since the bombshell UFO footage leaked? Now in a second government leak from the same area, now in dramatic statements leaked online, Navy officers from the infamous 2004 UFO incident who witnessed the encounter and saying that unknown individuals forced them to hand over data, recordings, and videos. Wait till you hear this. For several days in November 2004, a Navy missile cruiser sailing around 100 miles off the coast of Southern California detected strange radar signals emanating from an object in the sky. The signals were erratic and didn't seem to match those given off by known aircraft. The Navy then deployed fighter jets to catch a close glimpse of the strange object and once succeeded in recording a blurry black and white video that was, to the government's chagrin, publicly released in 2017 along with two other videos of UFO sightings from years later. Since the leak, five Navy officers have come forward in a recent interview with Popular Mechanics. They claim a secretive government organization took over the investigation at the time. According to Tim McMillan, who names the officers by name, these men share a connection of being witnesses to one of the most compelling UFO cases in modern history what became known as the Nimitz UFO Encounters, an event that the Navy recently confirmed indeed involved in unidentified aerial phenomena. These five men are the forgotten witnesses of this incident, largely overlooked in favor of the grainy footage and pilot reactions. Nonetheless, these are the witness personal to events that are not associated with any other known man-made objects and they could be key to understanding an event that a leading aviation defense expert says likely wasn't ours. One of the men describes the UFO appearing on the Navy vessel radar. He describes the radar malfunction in the following context. Once we finished all the calibration and brought it back up, the tracks were actually sharper and clearer. Sometimes they'd be at an attitude of 80,000 or 60,000 feet. Other times they'd be around 30,000 feet going like 100 knots. Their radar cross sections didn't match any known aircraft. They were 100% red, no squawk, no IFF, identification, friend or foe. Operations Specialist Senior Chief Kevin Day was tasked with the critical role of protecting the airspace around the strike group. My job was to man the radars and ID everything that flew in the skies. Day said in the documentary film, The Nimitz Encounter. On or around November 10th, 2004, roughly 100 miles off the coast of San Diego, Day began noticing strange radar tracks near the area of San Clemente Island. The reason why I say they're weird is because they were appearing in groups of five to 10 at a time, and they were pretty closely spaced to each other. And they were 28,000 feet going 100 knots tracking south. In another YouTube clip, Ryan Vogelt, the former leading petty officer and power plant specialist for the Seahawk helicopter, recalled the tone aboard the missile cruiser at the time. Senior Chief Day, his name, was being called over the comms, no bullshit, every two minutes, Vogelt said. I recalled hearing something like a big real world scenario was going on but I just didn't really understand. While Day's air traffic controllers continued to monitor the strange radar returns, Voorhees, who was manning radar, says he began to take the opportunity to use the ship's advanced tracking systems to catch a glimpse of whatever these objects were. When they'd show up on radar, I'd get the relative bearing and then run up to the bridge and look through a pair of heavily magnified binoculars in the direction the returns were coming from. Describing what he saw during the daytime, Voorhees says the objects were too far off to make out any distinguishing features. However, he could clearly see something moving erratically in the distance. I couldn't make out details, but they'd just be hovering there. Then, all of a sudden, in an instant, they'd dart off to another direction and stop again, Voorhees says. At night, they'd give off a kind of phosphorus glow and were a little easier to see than in the day. By November 14th, the strange returns had been continuously showing up for close to a week, 
with an air defense exercise scheduled for that morning. Day convinced his commanding officers to let him direct air traffic to attempt an intercept of these anomalous radar returns. Day's decision led the VFA-41 Squadron Commander David Favre to encounter what an unofficial executive summary later described as an elongated egg or tic-tac shape with a discernible midline horizontal axis of approximately 46 feet in length. In a subsequent flight by another F-A-18, thanks to state-of-the-art targeting pod, Lieutenant Chad Underwood would successfully capture video of the anomalous aerial vehicle, or AAV, and the story of how the United States Naval Forces were outmaneuvered, harassed, and generally just confused at the unexplained actions of a vehicle that was not one of their own remained top secret for 13 years. Another man by the name of Hughes claims that two men accompanied by his commanding officer seized the footage, which the men all agree was originally much longer and clearer. He recalls this incident when he says, they were not on the ship earlier and I didn't see them come on. I'm not sure how they got there. According to Hughes, his commanding officer told him to turn over the recently secured hard drives. We put them in the bags. He took them. Then he and the two anonymous officers left. Inside the Princeton, Voorhees had a similar encounter. These two guys show up on a helicopter, which wasn't uncommon. But shortly after they arrived, maybe 20 minutes, I was told by my chain of command to turn over all the data recordings for the AEGIS system. The testimonies of these men should be taken extremely seriously. They are eyewitnesses to something that our best defenses could not even cope with. Something that toyed with our intelligence, as well as showed us that we are at an arm's length and contact with them was not exactly appropriate. In this sense, we can't help but feel that this may be a coordinated leak of the UFO phenomenon that could lead to contact with a civilization that is beyond that of the Earth. But what do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below and as always, thank you for watching. Roger, uh, there's some oh, trouble shooting to the left. Can you box moving target? No, I took an auto turn. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh, dude. Wow. Oh, okay. <laughs>